Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Digital Wilds. I'm Robin, and this is Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. Now, this isn't one of the best remembered of the Spyro games, and it's probably one of the least played. Because after the PS1 heyday and the Game Boy Advance titles, which are isometric and also very good, they tried to release a fourth, fourth title along similar lines, and unfortunately, it was never really properly finished. So it has a number of issues. Uh, which we'll be exploring as we go through this game. But I still think that the fundamental gameplay loop is quite fun. There are just several problems that stop it being as good as it could be. Uh, so without further ado, let's make a start. It's just a float, you scaredy cat. They sure do look happy, don't they, Spyro? Well, it's not every day that a dragon gets his dragonfly. Uh, right, Sparks. So, we meet again, little dragon. I'm back, and I'm stronger than ever! Who are you calling little, Shorty? Nobody invited you! This is an invitation-only party. Very clever, Dragon. You know, you should join me. We would make a great team. What do you want this time, Ripto? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> what do we want this time, boss? You're not hired for your brains, you dinosaurian land mass! Keep thinking and I will send you back to the place I found you, unemployed in Molten Crater, begging for work from Nasty Nork. Now, back to what I was saying. Well, what do I want this time? I'm glad that you asked, Purple Pest, and I will be happy to demonstrate. Since I've had enough to do with dragons, I thought, perhaps, Dragonfly. <laughs> well, that wasn't supposed to happen, but you see, without the power of dragonflies, the dragons are nothing. Soon the dragon homelands will be mine. <laughs> That little lizard totally stole all the dragonflies. Even Sparks is gone. Spyro, Crunchy, don't worry. I think I know where to start. Follow me. Sparks! I thought I lost you, pal. <laughs> That was close, Sparks. Listen, I think I may have figured out a way to catch those dragonflies. Spyro, stand back! Whoa! What'd you do that for? Drat, that didn't exactly work right. I'm still learning, you know, Spyro. The good news is I've created a powerful magic that will enable you to use different breath abilities. The bad news is, you're gonna have to find dragon runes to use them, since the spell scattered them in different parts of the dragon realms. Cool! Come on, Sparks! Let's get going! We've got a lot of work ahead of us if we want to find those dragonflies. Do you think we'll ever get a day off? So, here we are, with a excuse plot about dragonflies. This is, as you would expect from a Spyro game, a sort of vaguely roaming collect em up 3D platformer. Um... As Bianca said, we get some additional breath abilities in this game. Uh, unfortunately, we start with the most useless of them, which I will demonstrate in a moment. So after some unpleasantly long loading times, uh, we can head over here and get this mysterious octagon, which lies on the ground. To add to our fire breath, which I've demonstrated there, with bubble breath, uh, which is, frankly, a bit of an excuse, uh, because it is never useful for anything other than catching dragonflies, as I will shortly demonstrate. It works like this. Well, it's supposed to work like that, except that you'll find that often the bubbles do not connect properly with the dragonflies, making it really rather uh, inconvenient to collect them. 
So we'll just go through all the little mini tutorials here as we do every initial bit of gameplay for the first time. But you know how a Spyro game works. You collect gems. You, uh, well, should be able to use the gems to pay off money bags to access new areas. We'll get to that. Um, and there are sheep, which we can roast in order to get Sparks' health back. If he is damaged, he goes down first to blue Sparks, then to green Sparks, then he dies. Then if we're hit again, we die. So... It's relatively generous health-wise for a sort of late 90s, early 2000s platformer series, um, but not much more than that. We'll also have various baskets and vases we can smash to get treasure. Again, it's uh, relatively simple, and there will be, I think, seven to 8,000 gems in this game in total. The um, the problems begin, and you'll see that it's, it's not an unattractive game. It's a pretty good-looking game for, for 2002 or whenever this came out. Um, but it has problems with performance, as you might have seen in some of the cutscenes already. This is actually the GameCube version, which uh, is the is the better performing of the versions, because it was released slightly later, so they had time to iron out some of the problems with the uh, PS2 version. Um, but in all versions, there are problems with glitches, slowdown, um, weird uh, bits of clipping errors, and um, enemies and attacks that don't quite work right. It, it is a problematic game. It's also a really uh, un unpleasantly short game. I get the feeling it was it was kind of rushed towards the end because it only has around a dozen levels compared to the um, several different sort of homeworlds that are in the uh, in the PS1 titles. Uh, so it feels like I think it was badly received because it honestly feels like a bit of a step backwards. So you'll see here there are these uh, gates which can only be unlocked by getting the different kinds of breaths. Now they can also be unlocked by glitching through them, but I'm not going to be doing that because. Uh, I feel like I might as well show you this game as it was intended to be played. So we'll run around this little homeworld area and gather as much treasure as we can and uh, then head into one of the main levels. So here we have uh, a gateway to one of the later levels, which I believe uh, requires yet 25 dragonflies. So we're not going to get there till relatively late in the game. I think there are around 90 in total, um, which is, again is less collectibles than you'd expect from a Spyro game. This also doesn't have things like uh, alternate characters, it doesn't have little mini stages with sparks. It's, um, it is a bit lacking, unfortunately. Now, it was overlooked at the time because it came out around the same time as the uh, Spyro Season of Ice and Season of Flame games, uh, which were 2D isometric platformers on the Game Boy Advance, and they were excellent. I can highly recommend going and playing those. Uh, they managed to be a Spyro game more true to the original experience than this one does. So here we have the jumping tutorial. Spyro can obviously uh, glide and flap at the end in order to gain extra height, um, which will also allow us to be given a dragonfly if he ever stops glitching around in circles. Well, he gets there in the end and his neck breaks in the process. Uh, so <laughs> you begin to see some of the glitches in this game at work. And we get our second dragonfly, um, so that's helpful in helping us to unlock later levels. Sparks here explaining how we've got these challenge portals. Um, these are fairly simple, although they are quite unforgiving, so I may fail this the first time through. But our job is basically to uh, roast the scarecrows within the allotted time, which uh, you can see on the left there ticks down relatively quickly. I've basically memorised over playing this game several times exactly where they are, but uh, it's still possible to miss them on occasion, so um, there's no guarantee that we're gonna we're gonna get this finished. It's possible, it's possible we'll get there, but the last one is quite far away at this stage, so it's gonna be a bit dicey. That time is ticking down faster than I would like, frankly. But we get there, so with all of those roasted, we get a third dragonfly. Hey, it's G. Or yeet, as the Generation Zs would say. As you'll see, as we approach treasure, Sparks can grab it for us. If we've been damaged sufficiently, the Sparks is dead. He won't do that, so that's another incentive to keep him alive. Although, this is not a very difficult game in terms of being damaged by enemies. You're much more likely to be screwed over by uh, the environment, or by glitches, or by uh, other other un un unfair means. Um, you're also, if you're a, if you're a speedrunner, if you um, can head bash uh, sufficiently well on the edge of the clipping for that portal, you can skip straight through to uh, the final boss immediately. So with that instruction from the dragon Miyagi, we head off to our uh, Asian themed world. Had another punishingly long loading screen there that I'm not sure is uh, whether it's down to the game or whether it's down to the fact that I'm emulating this. Um, I do actually own a copy of this game before anyone complains about me emulating it. Uh, I just emulate them, I emulate these GameCube games because it allows me to play them in HD at much higher quality than uh, just recording them with a capture card. So 
you'll thank me in terms of YouTube compressing the hell out of this and being able to still watch it in HD at the end. As you'll see, we've got a, a Dragonfly just on the loose here, so we'll pick up Steffi very easily. I'm not sure how many of these we're going to get through today. I'm just going to play for about an hour and we'll see how, what we can get through. As you'll see, these enemies are particularly easy to sort of charge into. They don't put up much of a fight and uh, you're honestly very unlikely to get damaged unless you screw up and manage to miss them. Um, so we'll just charge around this opening area, collect as much treasure as we can and then head on. So with several dozen gems collected, we'll head over to this platform, smash these baskets for five gems each, which is a nice return on the effort involved in collecting them, and then flame this frozen dragon here. Ah, Spyro, thank goodness you had the sense to free me from that icy cage. Who would have thought the Riptox would dare invade the sacred? Yes, yes. Thank you, Bruce. The gist of what he says is that he's now going to open the gate to allow us to proceed further in the level. As you'll guess from the dragons so far being called Miyagi and Bruce, we have a certain martial arts theming to this level, uh, which, you know, is a little bit obvious, but uh, not too bad as these things go. There's been martial arts themed levels in, in other Spyro games, so it at least does fit the pattern. These enemies are big and tough enough, as Sparks is now going to tutorialise, that they need to be taken out by Flame Breath. These guys are slightly more likely to damage you just because they have decent range on them and because you have to get up close and personal to uh, hit them with the fire. I'm not going to collect every gem I come across in this video because one, I'm not intending on finishing this game, and two, um, for reasons I'll, I'll talk to you about soonish, um, there is not actually much point in collecting most of the treasure. So yes, he's just explaining that Zoe acts as a sort of temporary save point for us so we can restore to in the event that we're killed during the level. That's not likely to happen unless I fall off a ledge, but this being a particularly glitchy game, it is entirely possible that I will fall off a ledge, so that's not something I'm going to discount. I managed to actually get hit by one of the little enemies there, that's what happens if you uh, can't rotate the camera well enough to see them. Fortunately, we flame that guy and down he goes. So I've just seen another little dragonfly roaming over there. Um, so I should capture that guy relatively easily if I can get within range of him. Unfortunately, they're pretty speedy, and if they don't want you to catch them, um, if they if they can get their AI and gear, they can actually be quite difficult to capture. Plus, they uh, mock you like that. Fortunately, we catch him on a corner, and we get shellac. Hey, it's shellac. So, with him collected, um, we'll head up here. Now, we obviously see we've got a couple of ways to go here. We've got the frozen dragon, who is how we proceed through uh, further into this level. Um, we've also got that kite on that rock over there and we've got a shining portal on the other side so i'll just quickly we can't actually finish this right now but i'll pop over here and show you the uh issue we are meant to be dealing with which is from this little baby dragon and the kite is stuck up in the tree uh and we can't get that get that from now uh that is something that we'll have to wait for later the, the way we do that is we have to freeze him into a block and use him as a platform to jump on which i can't imagine he finds a very pleasant experience it does at least get the kite back for him so we do pick up a rune here very early on uh, which is the the lightning room, uh, which allows us to, um, I think, activate certain electric uh, poles. Okay, so uh, next we'll go over and check out this portal. This is for one of the challenge levels, I believe. Um, these can be a little bit unstable, so this game might crash at this point. If it does, then I'll have to come back uh, and do a cut. Okay, so we fortunately survived the terrifying loading screen transition and made it to Banzai Speedway. Um, so we've got two challenges here, with Time Attack and Race the Ninjas. Um, Race the Ninjas is the easier of the two, but uh, there, I'll show you the time attack. Uh, this takes the same form in all the secret levels throughout this uh, game. You basically have four checklists to complete, one of which will be a set of rings as that leads you into the level, and then you'll have to destroy uh, a number of objects or ignite torches or you know chase down those, those rickshaws. Unlike uh, the older games on the PS1, destroying these targets doesn't give you extra time. Uh, you have a fixed time limit, um, which I think takes some of the... Uh, the fun out of the challenge to be honest because there's no uh, sense of tension to be built as you uh, as you break through uh, to the next objective. If you run backwards while chasing these guys it tends to be quicker because obviously you're closing the gap between them faster um, so if we just loop around the track here we can fairly easily destroy all these rickshaw guys. Um, your, main, your main obstacle here is not so much the rickshaw guys as your controls which are quite uncontrollable when you are charging around quickly on the ground like this. Um, but with all four of them down, we've now beaten three of the four objectives with a minute to spare. Um, so our next thing is to ignite these lanterns, and then we will be done. This is obviously the first speedway in the game, so it's the easiest, but they never really uh, get particularly hard once you figure out the routine. Um, they do sometimes recommend a particular order if you fail them. Um, I tend to find that those are marginally effective in terms of they might be more time efficient than uh, some of the other orders, but they don't. They, you tend to be able to do them in pretty much any order you want as long as you know where they are. 
Um, so where is the last lantern? That's my next question. Maybe it's this one? Oh yeah, here we go, with three seconds to spare. Yeah. So you'll see that if you make a mistake, the uh, timing can be really quite tight. Uh, I'm not going to try again, despite the fact that it tries to kip or gabor you into uh, doing it a second time, even when you've succeeded. I'm pretty sure Sparks' lines in this are just recorded by someone speaking them into a kazoo, which I quite like as a bit of sound design. <laughs> So now we'll go on and race the ninjas for a second dragonfly. Um, this time we have to A, fly through all the rings in order to continue to qualify, and B, attack and take down our opponents. Now this is difficult because if you just if you just race straight and just go along the line of red dots, you will lose because you need to find a way to overtake the ninjas somehow. So if you duck down and you find these stars which are hidden throughout the level and you take shortcuts like this, um, you can gain speed boosts. Fortunately, through muscle memory over playing this game so many times, I can remember where most of these stars are, so we might be able to get this on the first go through. But as you'll see from this, the ninjas can themselves use the stars, uh, particularly the ones that are, are sort of pre-programmed to finish higher up. I think all the um, all the AI on this is in a pre-programmed route, which I find a little bit um, cheap, and it's another one of those games, it's another one of those aspects of the game that speaks to it being relatively kind of cheaply made and a bit rushed. Um, but you know, I can forgive it a bit because this isn't primarily a racing game. It is a it is a platformer, and they have to, uh, you know, come up with a challenge at short notice. This this might be just the easiest way to do it. So we're into second place uh, before reaching the third lap, which implies to me that we might be able to make it through. Okay, so we've now entered lap three, and there's only one guy ahead of us. So fingers crossed, we can catch up with him. But he's also very adept at using the stars. However, if we flame him, uh, you can also slow them down. Uh, there's no sort of crashing into enemies in this. You won't drop into the water. Although if you do, I think if you hit the ground as well, um, you do fail. So that's one to keep in mind. After having hit all the stars successfully, uh, you see that the next ring after this one will be the finish line. So we are now unbeatable. And through we go for a, another win. Now, there will be no point in returning to this speedway. There are no other dragonflies. There's no rings to get no rings, this isn't a Sonic game, there's no other gems to get from this, um, so unfortunately that is the last we'll be seeing of Banzai Speedway. Back to the main level. So after another punishingly long loading screen, um, and watching that guy pop in at very, sh at very short range, uh, and very belatedly decide that he is actually frozen, uh, we can unfreeze him, um, Jackie, who again will be named after Jackie Chan, another martial arts reference, uh, I'll let you know if there are any I don't get. Um, allows us through that set of gates at the end. Now, helpfully, because we've left the level and come back, all the enemies have respawned, which is obviously uh, undesirable of them. One goes down, two goes down, three go down. It's very easy, so we'll hop down here, so we'll collect the treasure as we go. 459 should be more than adequate for what we need for now. Uh, bit of pop, bit of uh, lag there as we load in this area of the level. Uh, this is not a very well-optimized game, as I've said. Glide across this gap here, take that guy down, these are best addressed from the front, and head over here and find a familiar friend. Ah, Spyro. In trouble again, I see. So, long story short, he wants 200 gems to activate a floating bridge. Now, this is not unfamiliar Thanks, from Spyro. Moneybags if you played some of the earlier Spyro games, because he's obviously a fixture there as a bit of a gate to progress, which forces you to collect treasure as you go, as well as the relevant uh, plot collectible. Um, Unfortunately, those 200 gems you give to Moneybags there, uh, firstly, you never see him again. There are no further Moneybags gates in the game, thus rendering all treasure collection past this point absolutely pointless, other than for bragging rights and 100% completion, and frankly, who has bragging rights over Spyro and the Dragonfly. And secondly, uh, you never get them back. Uh, traditionally in, in Spyro games, there's a point at the end of the game where you can chase down Moneybags, um, partic uh, particularly memorably in Spyro 3, you can attack him and chase him around the final uh, hub level in order to get all your gems back uh, gradually. There's no such method in this. You are just down 200 gems permanently for the rest of the game. So even if you get the uh, requisite extra 7,800 gems, you will be stuck on 7,800 rather than being able to go up to 8,000 uh, for the rest of the time. So quickly glide over this gap and we find ourselves another dragonfly who is ripe for the catching. Unfortunately, the dodgy animation and the uh, slow firing speed of the bubble breath makes this more of a chore than it should be, frankly. There he goes. Hey, it's Dawn. So with Dawn in the bag, we also find that on this ledge uh, there's this very helpful jar containing a full heal butterfly, uh, which also gives us an extra life. So now to five, and we find the second of the little kite dragons, um, who, as I said before, we can't do anything with uh, because well, we might be able to actually with this spiral uh, glidey thing. Let's have a, let's have a go. No, that doesn't give us enough air to uh, 
to head over there and grab the kite. So that's something we won't be able to do until we can come back with a uh, with ice bread. So Toshiro, uh, I don't get that reference. If anyone knows who Toshiro is in the martial arts or uh, martial arts film world, that would be ideal. I'm not quite sure what these enemies are. Are they like giraffes or crocodiles? It's slightly unclear. They've got giraffe patterns, but they look slightly lizardy. But they're also bipedal and wearing kimonos and wielding staffs. So it's not entirely obvious. Still, I do know that they have to be set on fire. So with another Zoe encounter, uh, we see another dragonfly just laid out on the path for us here. They don't gate a lot of these behind puzzles, um, which does make it relatively easy to get up to your quota for accessing subsequent levels. Um, particularly when they seem to only roam between fixed routes. So there goes Cinder, we're already up to nine dragonflies. I think the first gate for uh, subsequent levels is 15, um, so we should be able to get there relatively easily. Uh, we've also got a second uh, special level here, which I will show you very briefly. So Patton, who is obviously not named after martial arts, but is named after the uh, American general, uh, will clear out the tank training area. I think there are two dragonflies to be got here. Um, so. We drive our tank around the same as we operate Spyro normally. There are bunnies we can run over here to repair our tank, which seems counterintuitive to vehicular design. Um, there are also 21 enemy tanks that we have to destroy. There are also targets along the way, which we are required to uh, take out. If we press the L and R buttons, we can rotate the turret independently of the uh, vehicle, but that just makes it difficult to aim in my experience. And we're not limited for ammo or anything, so you might as well just keep uh, blasting away. So. Yeah, we'll see a tank out in the open there. They do hide behind these uh, stone obstacles, although we can do the same. So it is possible to... Uh, oh, no. Yeah, so we take our first hit, which is uh, the same as Spyro in normal gameplay. I think we can take three hits and then we die. I believe there's no more hiding in this area. But there are some hiding behind that uh, weaker gate there. Again, sadly, no gems to collect in this uh, in this special mission, and it doesn't really matter anyway. We're just here to destroy the tanks, which I don't know. It feels like a bit of a wasted opportunity. I think there was more they could have done with this tank, you know, stage. I know, I know that in the the, the special character stages in in Spyro Three, they were quite an integral part of the game, where you had to, uh, you know, if you were roaming around as Sheila the kangaroo or whatever, you had to um, gather gems, and it basically operated as a normal level, just with different controls, um, which I it was better to my mind. So because the AI in this game isn't very good, they will often destroy their own cover uh, and also waste their shot, which gives you their reload time in order to retaliate and destroy them. So we very swiftly managed to uh, re get back to where we were before being killed last time, uh, which should allow us to, if we can play this slightly tactically, um, swing around and destroy some of our enemies uh, relatively easily. So down goes one, and there goes the second, and there goes the third, and there goes the fourth. And this time, we've managed not to get surrounded. You'll also see there from that shot just then that our, our attacks do slightly home in. Um, there is a little bit of aim assist on this, which is very nice. Right, so 17 down. We can, if we restore, we're running over this cute little bunny. Um, hopefully, make it through to finishing this level. 19 down. Only two remain, one of which is there. So we can destroy him very easily. And the last one goes down. Yeah, so we'll just head back to the level for now and finish that off. Uh, yeah, restored to the level without our uh, walking animation briefly. Um, we turn the corner, grab some more gems. That should allow us to proceed to the final area. Yep, so I've just checked the atlas and we did in fact not have another dragonfly to get from the tank level, so we are right to quit. There are three remaining in this level. Uh, one, I think, for finishing the uh, main sort of story arc of this level and second for getting the uh, kites and another one that is roaming around here. Then we get cloudy. Change him back to our fire breath, which is something you always have to remember to do after catching a dragon fight. Oh, we've got a third kite there. So clearly the kites are a thing of their own. Um, you'll see we're already back to 500 gems, so uh, Moneybags' is daylight robbery has not caused us too much difficulty in the long run. Blast that guy off the edge with our fire, and after clearing out this basket, we free the fire. We free the final frozen dragon. We get Roxy. And I believe that leaves us on uh, 12 dragonflies. So that is this level done, basically, and as you'll see there, we have the return portal. I'm going to quickly uh, pop over here and show you that this game uh, in invokes the traditional Spyro uh, trope of looping levels. Um, so if we head down here, you'll find this gate is now open. It was closed when we started the level, and we find ourselves back at the beginning. This is here basically for if you miss the stuff and you want to go back for 100% completion, which, um, while it would be nice, I don't, because I don't have the 
uh, freeze ability required to finish all the dragonflies and there's no point in collecting the treasure. So I'll just quickly head over here to the dragon statue and we'll install the new rune we found. And uh, we now have access to Electric Breath, which uh, for most enemies just operates exactly the same as the Fire Breath. You'll see there we just roast our prey as easily as we did before, and we can break open baskets with it. But uh, for now, its main purpose is that it allows us to get through to the next area of the homeworld. So you'll remember we saw those uh, ability locked gates earlier. Now we can unlock the electric gate. Now, it seems to me there wasn't much point in getting these gates because uh, all the levels behind them are locked by the number of dragonflies you've got anyway. So particularly the one at the top of the level where you've got the snow gate, uh, the front, or the ice breath gates, um, all those levels require you to have 45, 55, 65 dragonflies. So even if you were to get up there earlier in the game, you, you couldn't access them. Um, and I think it's, uh, I don't know, slightly disappointing that uh, they just added sort of arbitrary gates. But I think it's a signal that there was more that was intended to go into this level that just didn't for whatever reason. So, yes, thank you for explaining climbing. Um, I'm sure we could have figured that out. So, grab this dragonfly who is handily posing for us and hasn't run away. And uh, hey, it's takes us up to 13. I think we can probably get to 15 uh, without having to leave this home world. I think there's more just available here in terms of challenges, challenges and stuff. So, we have another challenge here using the electric breath, um, which... Much like the Scarecrow Challenge requires us to take a set number of targets in a limited amount of time, but unfortunately this time I can't remember exactly where they are, so um, it might be that I fail this on the first go round. So our first two are up there, which is obvious enough. Uh, I'm not going to change to our electric breath, not the bubble breath. Um, so a quick scan around reveals that there is one over here. It looks like uh, a sort of board game piece rather than a kind of uh, lightning rod, but I'm... Uh, not going to be critical of their design decisions because this is a relatively nice looking game. So four down and about half our time remaining. This might get tough. So three down there. Um, there's one over here on this beach. We'll catch that dragonfly in a minute. One over on that island. Um, and then one more remaining, the location of which is slightly unclear to me. But it might be along this path. So brilliantly, our time keeps running down when the sparks bothers us with tutorializing swimming. So I am now going to fail that. Thank you, game. So that does at least show us where the final uh, little lightning rod is. It's over on this side, so maybe we can get that first and we can get it this time. So with all the lightning poles hit, we get ourselves another dragonfly. Plus, there's a second one over there in the background who I think we'll be capturing in a moment. Don't want to lightning him, although you'd think that would immobilize a dragonfly as surely as bubbles. So that takes us up to 15 dragonflies. We'll just quickly demonstrate swimming. Um, the underwater sections in this game are slightly underwhelming, frankly. They are relatively easy to control, um, and there's a lot of treasure involved in them, as you can see, but they're also a little bit dull in terms of combat, because you can only charge, you can't use your breath abilities. So it limits the range of gameplay involved a bit. Um, but we'll just quickly charge around here, collect all this pointless treasure, which at least will personally enrich Spyro, even if it doesn't uh, end up going into money bags and pockets for extra abilities. So, Porkins will allow us to head to the next level, where I will join you in a moment. So we find ourselves in another themed level. Uh, in this occasion, it is a sort of tiki Hawaii Pacific Island themed level. And we'll find our first enemies hidden under here. They can just be charged. They have harpoons, which are quite dangerous. Um, it is quite easy to get hurt underwater in this level. Um, but for now, there is not much to do, so we will push on. Uh, I will show you, however, this is what vases underwater look like, and they need to be charged into to be destroyed and get the delicious gems within. So those wooden uh, tiki heads will come after us, and so will these tourist dinosaurs with their who can only be flamed, they cannot be charged. But that button can be charged, and that releases our first tourist from his cage. So as well as going and catching this uh, dragonfly over here, Gary, we better go have a chat to this chap we've just freed. Those pelicans function as Sparks' fodder in this level, so instead of the sheep, we will heal him by killing them. So that's another Porkins, or they're all called Porkins, or the Porkins who set us out on that boat got captured. I'm not entirely sure. So as well as freeing Porkins, we've opened ourselves up a new area, which uses the... Uh, Lovely uh, example of twisty corridors where you can't see either end in order to hide a load zone. So this is our int formal introduction to vases, although of course if we know Spyro games we already know how they work. They can't be flamed, they have to just be charged, but that's fine. Uh, the function is exactly the same, they just contain treasure. 
Um, so we've got a relatively deep uh, underwater bit over here, which as well as some treasure vases floating merrily, uh, does contain some enemies we need to be taken out. As we head back to the surface, we find ourselves another gate which will need to be opened, but this one is a little bit hard to get to. But we'll have a chat with Porkins and see what he has to say. Okay, so that one is sure. Hamlet rather than uh, Porkins, so they're not all called Porkins, that was just the, the guy we met earlier. So this uh, rather obviously tutorialises as far as where the button is. So he also points out that there is an underwater cave which will allow us to get there. So that is our objective for now. Um, there's a second gate over there which uh, will come in handy later, but for now, let's head down and see where we if we can find a way to go. Here it is. Spyro doesn't have a breath meter or anything like that. These uh, underwater tunnels basically function the same as the above water ones. So up we pop. Lots of vases and things to destroy here. And consequently lots of treasure to collect. And that one's Hammy. They all have pun themed names, which I think is uh, probably quite galling if you're a, you know, a, a child that wants to be non-conformist and your parents give you this uh, terrible embarrassing name, like uh, Robin. Right, so Hammy is free. And if we head through here, we might see our way clear to finding another pig to release from the jail cell. Yeah, here we go. Here's the button who Hamlet referred to. Great. So despite being free, they don't immediately actually leave their cage, uh, which I presume is for important plot-related reasons rather than because the developers were lazy. Just quickly take out these tiki heads for another button. Oh, and fall off the ledge immediately and have to go all the way back round. So we're back round and we hit the other button, which hopefully will release a further pig. Oh yeah, there's a dragonfly down there who uh, is ripe for the snatching. Uh, however, while I'm still up here, I'm just going to quickly uh, climb this ledge and see if there's... Yep, yeah, there's a challenge there, so that gives us the uh, fire breath. So we can shoot the targets accordingly. I don't think there's any particular time limit with this other than uh, the, the super breath, because... Uh, we do have the gate right there, so we can just shoot them uh, as as needs be. Um, I don't know whether there's a. I thought there might have been some kind of range on the on the on the shots there, but they are just badly rendered. So with all the targets down, that lets us switch over to our bubble breath. So with that down, we go back up to the bubble breath. Got a small platforming section to do, which because it's this game is incredibly poorly designed. So back in a moment. Just going to quickly use this opportunity actually to run over here and rescue this dragonfly. If Ripto really wanted to keep the dragonflies away from the dragons, he might have, you know, put them in one location securely guarded rather than scattering them throughout the world hey, like Jax. But with Socrates in hand, we're going to head round and do that platforming section up above to capture another dragonfly. So being careful to carefully land on these platforms this time, we make our way over here and once the super fire breath runs out, we're just going to quickly roast this dragonfly appropriately to answer for his crimes. So back to the bubble breath, and if it ever works, we should be able to capture this dragonfly. Unfortunately, this game is glitchy. Get in my bubbles. Okay, so by jumping, we managed to catch Homer. Hey, it's Homer. Could head over there and capture those vases and the tiki torches, but I honestly don't see much point, so instead, head back over here and speak to Hamlet, who had just freed. Well, maybe not speak to him, but proceed down here's corridor. We've also passed a thousand gems, which is very nice. Unfortunately, it doesn't speak to much of the uh, length of this game that we're already at a thousand, despite having the 200, which are taken off by uh, money bags, and there only being 8,000 in the game, because it implies we're about a sixth of the way through this game already. It's it's not long. However, we're now in this final area, which has a large underwater section, which we will need to exploit. So we're going to quickly just charge around and take out some of these enemies to make the area a little bit safer. So I think that's the enemy is duly taken out. So let's head over here and lovely underwater area. So we head under this net over this net. Takes us down this long internal corridor. If I remember correctly, yep, yeah, this is another new area of the game which contains lots of treasure for us, firstly and foremostly, but also this kind of a wall. This is one of the more involved levels of the game. I much prefer this to Dragonfly Dojo because that was a very much a tutorial level that didn't contain much in the way of actual gameplay. Um, so as well as that large boat over there. We've got another pig to rescue here. This one's very easy because we just bashed the button that's right next to him. I think this might be the one that gets us the dragonfly. Get me out of here. So that's Chili, which is not an overtly oh. pig named uh, pun, although it might be related to Chili Dogs, which yeah. are you know made of pork. So. Ah, so brilliantly, I might now not be able to get back over there to capture that dragonfly immediately, but we do have access to firstly those large amount of gems. And secondly, to this cannon, which we watch 
blows up that rock obstacle over there, releasing another way through. So just going to quickly pop over there and catch that dragonfly, and then we'll see what's down there. And he takes us up to 20 dragonflies caught, which is very nice. Capture a 21st, Plato. And then we'll head along the corridor behind Chili, the final pig, and see what waits for us there, which I think will just be the, t the uh, teleport back to the homeworld. Oh, there's the return level. Ah, so that there was a second there was a second one I saw a moment ago. So I'm just going to quickly uh, run back through the level and see what's in there because a second, uh, another portal with an additional dragonfly would be quite good to see. So I'm not even trying to collect all the treasure, it's already just for falling into my lap. Um, there is a case to be made that this made it almost too easy and uh, I think the fact that we're, we're, an hour, we're almost an hour into this uh, game, at least on my playthrough, this is going to be edited down and we're already about a quarter of the way through the game. Um, so, it's not a long one. Uh, you can pick this game up for a couple of quid now, so if you're into Spyro games and you haven't played it, it's uh, yeah, it's worth a look, because the gameplay is still there. I mean, it's still it's still a Spyro game, and it's still quite fun. Uh, it just doesn't have uh, all the bells and whistles you might expect from, uh, you know, one that was not rushed out as a sort of attempted launch title for some of the consoles. Okay, so we're aiming to capture the baby manta rays. I don't actually remember how this mini game works, so it's very likely I'll fail on the first attempt. Um, oh, okay. It's just a it's a directional shooter thing. We can fire nets out of our our big manta ray to capture the mini manta rays. This is not um, particularly well designed control wise, frankly. I don't know how this works in terms of timing. Can we capture each other's manta rays off each other, or do they just ca count as captured once and there's only a certain amount of them? Um, Frankly, it's very difficult to... So we don't want to collect the octopuses. They're not something we're after. And I presume they hurt us if we hit them? Oh, no, they just... They launch ink clouds, I see. So they're squid, not octopuses, but they seem to... I, I don't know. I don't know how this works. I, I'm slightly scared of uh, cephalopods, so I try and avoid thinking about octopuses and squid too much. Uh, you can sort of charge like you can underwater normally, but it kind of throws you up and down on the vertical plane, which makes it not an ideal solution. Okay, but we do have six to his four, so... However, we do now hold what I would call a commanding lead. You could say we are the reigning champion. Oh no, we just had to capture 10. Excellent. So I don't believe I've ever caught that one before, uh, but it was easy enough to do on the first try. I don't know whether there's a second one involved. What? No, I don't think I do. So as we navigate our way around the terrible collision detection of the underwater netting, we find ourselves back at the end of the main level. I'm just going to quickly return to the homeworld and hopefully show you one more level. You can quite clearly see on this loading screen that we're just floating around in a circle uh, on a rotating disc rather than actually floating across any kind of journey. So with only 22 dragonflies, we're unable to unlock any further levels for the moment, but I am going to quickly pop in to the one we do have, which is this lovely barn. Now, as you'll see from the UFO that takes us to the level entrance, this is a rather extraterrestrial themed world. So here we are on this lovely farm, with a couple of moons in the sky, which implies that Spyro is not set on Earth, which raises questions of its own. Um, we have to take out the Space Riptox and rescue the Dragonflies accordingly. Now this um, level is unfortunately very glitchy, so I'm not going to be able to show you all of it, because there are bits of it that will just crash my emulator if I try and do them, and uh, I don't want to lose all the progress I've made on this video, so um, I'm only going to be doing the main quest, and then I'll try and show you something else to sort of make up for it. But you'll see, these... Uh, the enemies in this level have a mysteriously good aim to them, unlike the rest of the game. Um, it's actually quite easy to get killed by them. It's the only level in the game in which I found that to be true, and uh, we can kill these chickens to restore Sparks' health, so things aren't too bad. Uh, we pop down here, capture this dragonfly. More treasure to be got down here, but uh, as we know, that's relatively pointless. So these guys still have the laser guns, which makes them quite dangerous at range, uh, but they are the smaller ones, so can at least be charged. These uh, guys are not too tough. It's the uh, big tall lads who are going to be flamed that you might have trouble with. Get pulled into the speaking range of this chap, Farmer Dean, who has appeared to have just laid a sort of giant ruby out of his bum. Oh, get hit out of nowhere by an enemy I couldn't see, and it turns out that these guys are not my friend. And so now that we've got the electric breath, you'll see that we've got one of these lightning poles here, which can activate. Well, however, we're just going to quickly grab this dragonfly first, Mitnick. So we're climbing through the top of this barn. Uh, firstly, you can access that ledge, which I'm just going to quickly do to demonstrate that there is a lot of treasure to be got from taking slightly alternative routes. So we immediately get 100 treasure there, which um, is like 1% you know, of the game's total uh, in a single fell swoop, because they were not ones for uh, eking this thing out. So you'll see from this ledge here that there is a 
secret pathway over there, which I think leads to it. Yep, a secret minigame portal. Unfortunately, it's one that I'm pretty sure has a high chance of crashing the game. Uh, I think it's a UFO-based minigame where you are on a little spaceship shooting down UFOs that are trying to kidnap cattle. Um, it works pretty similarly to the uh, Manta Ray game we just played, so if you can imagine that, that will give you a pretty good impression. Or, you know, you could go and buy the game. Um, which I think I think that does... I mean, it still has a high chance of crashing things on console, I think, but it, it's not as bad as on an emulator. Get through to this level's second big platformy barn. Uh, fortunately, there are some chickens down here, so we can quickly just uh, heal ourselves up with some uh, electrified chicken. Not sure that's a brilliant cooking method, but it seems to work. These are cows which have the laser guns, like the dinosaurs do. I'm not quite sure why they differ from the... Uh, you know, the, the, the regular alien Riptox, because I would have thought that the cows would be fighting them, because in the minigame they are being kidnapped by them. Oh well, we'll roast that uh, scarecrow. I'm not sure if there's any purpose to doing that, although it's just fun interactivity. Climb atop this bale of hay, and electrify the pole for a similar solution to the one we just had. So over here, grab the gems and the butterfly, and that will take us over to this ledge, where we can get a whole bunch of treasure. So there's another minigame level there, I can't remember whether that's another UFO capture one or a speedway. Um, either way, I think it might be glitchy, so I'm not going to risk going into it. By heading around here, we find this uh, Super Breath portal, which, uh, among other things, allows us to shoot these guys from a distance, which makes uh, things a bit of a fireworks show. Although, apparently, that guy's seemingly immune. Not anymore, you're not. Oh, okay, so our job is to shoot the uh, is to shoot the targets uh, rather than just blast away the enemies, although removing them from the equation will make this uh, challenge a bit easier in the future, so we'll still get as many as we can in the, in the process. I'm not quite sure where the other three are. There's one. Two remain in the immediate vicinity. Ah, there they are. So down goes one, and down goes the other. That was curiously easy. But I'm not going to complain, because it does get us a, an extra dragonfly. we head around here. And in this barn, we find the cattle and the farmer, as well as the level exit. Farmer Bill has given us the ta challenge. We have this uh, box of explosives that needs to be ignited. You would have thought Spyro would have stood back there, but apparently no. And we have freed the cows, and therefore it completed the level. We get what he calls a thingamajig, and what we know as Dragonfly, specifically called Fiona. Hey, it's Fiona. So before we leave off Spyro for today, we're going to head back to the main bit of the hub level. We've been charging for some time and Sparks has still failed to eat that butterfly, which I think is related to how fast I was charging, which is not a great way to build your game mechanics. Hop up here, and in the spirit of everyone working from home, go chat to the sleepy bear in pyjamas. Pudgy, uh, who, now that we've got 25 dragonflies, will allow us through this portal. And that takes us through what, to my mind, is my favourite level of this game. Uh, it's not that it's particularly brilliant, it's just that it, it's, I think, the most classically spyro -y. We've got these uh, multiple high, uh, sort of lilac and pastel-y coloured uh, platforms, through which we are jumping in order to uh, take out enemies who have a particular dream theme in this uh, instance. And use these spiral whirly things to get around and I think it's just it's got a nice tone to it. So this also allows us to get the ice breath which um, if we were proceeding further in this game which sadly I don't think time will permit would allow us to get through to the upper area of the uh, of the home world although for now uh, I don't think we've got anywhere near enough dragonflies to uh, access any of the levels up there. Just managed to flame an enemy who did not react in any way to it, plus charge through some vases which did not react. So, uh, the, the glitches of this game are sort of making themselves known again. It's a shame, because Spyro and the Dragonfly is a game that really, I think, wants to be good. It wants to be considered one of the main Spyro entries, and everyone just kind of forgets about it, because, frankly, you know, if they'd given it six months extra development time, ironed out some of the glitches, added some more levels, added some more characters, maybe, maybe it could have been something really special. But um, as it is, it's an ambitious failure. And as you'll know from my Darkest of Days videos, and my Cube of War videos, and uh, my uh, some of my other some of my other content, this uh, the, the idea of the the the, the almost game is a uh, is a game that is an idea that is very close to my heart because I know you know as a creative individual that it's hard to get things right and that you tried can almost be as good as if you'd succeeded, but uh, the tragedy of the second-placed runner-up is um, is all the more compelling than the, uh, the story of the easy winner. 
So take out these Cupid Rhinox, which uh, I don't really understand what they are uh, supposed to be in terms of the dream team, but uh, I suppose maybe they're, I don't know, trying to shoot us with the arrow of sleep. I'm quite sure how that works. This isn't the Thief game. We also have these mysterious clouds, which for some reason can be charged to death. And we also have our first occurrence of the recurring enemy of uh, some of the older Spyro games, the Thief. Although wearing this strange outfit, which I don't quite understand. Um, and that gives us the magic wand. This bear might offer a clue to the wand mystery, if I can speak to him. Oh yeah, there we go. Let me just give that back to him. No animation involved, because they didn't bother to create one. Ah, okay, and that lets him power up our floaty thing, or he calls a swirly. Which, in my opinion, was getting your head flushed down a toilet, but not something that's ever happened to me, of course. My school bullies were far more inventive than that. So, you'll see that this level, unlike the other ones, is actually quite large and sprawling. There's a lot of platforming to be done. It's not just a linear progression. You see over here, there especially, those those platforms are, are, there, for the, are there for the exploring, um, which I quite like. Although, this uh, one is quite dicey in terms of uh, potentially killing you. We're also racking up the gems again, uh, so we might end up at a decent percentage of the game complete from just this one video. Um, so these telescope devices over here, firstly these platforms are remarkably easy to accidentally die on because of how floaty the controls are, but secondly if you electrify them they activate and once you've got all of them activated you will get a dragonfly. There's four in the level, we've already got one, so getting the rest of them that shouldn't be too difficult. And after an interminably long loading speed we find ourselves back at this place where fortunately the swirly is still activated and the enemies don't seem to mostly have come back. So we can run around, grab some extra treasure and head up there to see what awaits us. So as well as some lovely extra gems and one wonders how the currency in this world maintains its value when it's literally just lying all over the place and nobody seems to work. But I'm not going to question it for now. Uh oh. Bubble breath, not good. Yeah, that's the problem with the bubble breath. I don't see why, actually, they couldn't have just had the dragonflies lying around waiting to be captured, uh, like the like the frozen fairies in Season of Ice, uh, because functionally it's the same. They only roam within a certain limited area, and it just adds extra busy work to have the bubble breath added, which, um, as I've mentioned, cannot be used for any single other purpose than catching dragonflies. So back over to the electric breath, and that will allow us to activate this telescope. So the easier way to capture this dragonfly might in fact be start from over here and then we've got a much shorter glide between the platforms. This guy doesn't seem to respond at all to our attempts to capture him. And if we can get sufficient range, we'll pick up Sylvia. Hey, it's Sylvia. Looks like our next destination is going to be over there and I think we can just glide directly there, no need to use the platform. I might be uh, disabused of this notion if I fall into an abyss and hit an invisible wall, as this game might think, make me think is entirely likely, but I didn't, so we are over here and the level can duly proceed. Plus, we get ourselves an extra dragonfly if I can get the bubble breath in good order, but we get him in the end. Freeze, ice boy! Get a Zoe's app as a sort of save point and head up this mysterious slope to another quite sprawling open area, which is very nice to look at and has a kind of defined aesthetic to it, which. Um, I think, frankly, the farm level was really just a collection of, you know, rather linear bits of progression. So, what do we have here? Yeah, lightning pool, lightning clouds are a problem. Got to use our aim shots to take them down. We're never actually taught how to aim our shots, but I know how to do it because the controls in this are exactly the same as the old Spyro games. Honestly, I'd be surprised if this wasn't actually the same engine, uh, just ported to a slightly more powerful console. Um, I, you know, I kind of admire their uh, efficiency in doing that, if that is what they did, but uh, I'm not entirely clear. I think those are all gone, so if we go back and speak to our berry friend. Okay, yep, yeah, we get ourselves another dragonfly. So we're already up to 30. Hey, it's Takahiro. And now that there's no electricity, we can go in the water without fear. This might be quite a tr tr tricky bit of platforming. I'm going to have to give it some thought. Um, I reckon... From here over to there is probably the easiest way to do this. And yeah, oh no, that should have worked, but because the collision detection on this game is terrible, it didn't, so I died and had to restart. And nearly, we made it enough to get the gem. So trying a different jumping route this time, we make it across. And once the uh, super breath expires, I can light up this next telescope. So now that we've got lightning breath back, here we go. So we made it to the end of the level, but because we've not lit up all the beacons, I'm not sure whether this guy's going to give me a dragonfly yet. 
Um, no, no, I don't think so. So, unfortunately, we're not going to leave the level quite yet because I want to get that main mission completed. I don't need the gems. Why do I keep collecting the gems? I guess there's something compulsive about them, like popcorn. Well, I hear the fluttering of a dragonfly. And we'll capture him. Goose. Is that a Top Gun reference? It's slightly obscure if it is, but I'm not entirely clear. Some of the names in this are a little bit random. And we find ourselves a secret challenge portal. Well, let's try this out and see what we get. Aha! So we find ourselves in this uh, rather fun aerial combat game, which I seem to recall uh, controls very badly. Um, we are supposed to be... I don't know quite what we're supposed to be uh, objecting to here, but... Okay, so we've got these machine guns which seem entirely useless and which are only semi-automatic, so I have to keep hammering the button to actually get them to shoot. Uh, and my health is now very low. Apparently I can... Okay, so I'm supposed to be shooting down these galleons, but I've managed to get killed incredibly quickly. I'm going to have to figure out the controls for this very, very swiftly. I seem to have unlimited missiles, so it doesn't make it clear why I would ever want to use the uh, machine guns. Especially because they seem to be just as effective at uh, damaging the ships. I'm not entirely clear whether I'm doing this right, although that ship is smoking, so it seems to be damaged. I think we just have to hit them with loads and loads of bombs. I can bank. Uh, that seems entirely pointless. Oh, we seem to have nearly taken down one of the ships. It's on fire, at least, which uh, you'd think would imply it was not doing particularly healthily. Yeah, there we go, and they home in. Well, we're still at zero out of four taken down, so it's not clear entirely at what point they die. Maybe they just take a huge amount of damage. If they're just really tanky, that would be um, slightly poor level design. I'm going to fly sideways because I'm cool. Oh, I managed to take another hit, which is not good. And the palace is nearly down. Yeah, this uh, is frankly escaping me. Oh, no, one of the ships has gone down. We are, um, so have I. Okay, this is slightly escaping me. I'm going to go back to the main level. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think I am going to start leaving it there. We have seen a decent chunk of Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, and I hope you've seen remnants of what Spyro the Dragonfly, Enter the Dragonfly could have been. It was a game that had a lot of potential, and if it had had more money or more time or more something, it could have been something really great. Now, I'm a big fan of the Spyro games, and even I'll admit that this is not a brilliant one, but I do think it's worth playing, uh, particularly if you played the other ones, and you want an example that, I, honestly, I think it's better than the terrible Elijah Wood ones they started putting out in the late 2000s when they went all uh, emo and anime. It's um, It's got some good ideas to it. Uh, there's not enough of them, and they're not well enough executed, but they're not bad ideas. And I would um, be quite keen to see them better developed. If someone ever wanted to go back and make this the game it should have been, I'd be really keen to play it. Um, but I really enjoyed doing this one off. If you have any suggestions for games I should play next, my comments are open and I will be listening to suggestions eagerly. Uh, might not necessarily mean that your game gets a, uh, gets a look in, but I will definitely consider it. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you've uh, enjoyed this, consider subscribing because I'm a relatively new channel. I could use all the help I can get. Uh, I'm also on Patreon if you want to chuck me a couple of quid a month to help me keep this show on the road. But anyway, I will leave you there. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Thanks very much.